sure enough, and he knew that we could handle it. Absolutely. And then the winds came, right? And <laughs> listen, if you guys don't know, if you didn't see Facebook, we had um, some rain. Thank you, Jesus. About time. Okay, but with the rain came the wind. Now, the rain in and of itself was a blessing. The wind, on the other hand, was not. So uh, as not good as I felt all week, um, um, the staff has been under the weather. I think, Joseph, you guys said you had strep, I think. It was something. It was something that was not uh, nice to the body. Uh, my family was going through the same thing, and uh, it was like, okay, man, I don't feel good. Thursday morning, I wake up. I'm like, Pastor, I can't come in. I slept all day. Now, if you don't know me, me sleeping all day is like next to Jesus coming out of the grave because I, I just don't like being in bed. I don't. Like, I go to bed very late, and I wake up early because I just don't like being in bed. I feel like I'm going to be doing something. So I got up, and I'm like, man, I don't feel good, baby. I got I to gotta go back to bed. So I said, Pastor, man, I can't. I can't come in today. And so Thursday morning came, and I'm like, man, I, I don't feel good. So I sleep all day. That night, the kids are like, man, we want to see Pastor Paul Paul before he leaves. We want to see Pastor Paul Paul. I'm like, all right. So I call him. I'm like, hey, look, the kids want to see you. I'll stay in the car. You guys just come out, talk to the kids through the window. So Pastor comes out, and all of a sudden, rain. I'm like, hey, thank you, Jesus. Man, and this grass was starting to get hard to walk on. And I felt like I was walking on ice, crunch, 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 you know. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay. So we got to the back of the property. I'm like, okay, let's see if we can get some water in the pond, blah, blah, blah. Go to the back of the property. By the time I came to the front of the property, there was already like seven or eight trees down. And not, not like trees, but like trees and all their glory, and all their majesty, and all their hugeness. It was like we had two giant oaks fall over the front gate. Like, I'm talking about on the front gate. And I'm like, okay, God, I don't feel good. This is not right. Like, please help me tomorrow. So I wake up Friday morning, and I feel pretty good. Thank you, Jesus. I know you healed me because I did not feel this good yesterday. We got up, man. We started just cutting. 7 a.m., me and JoJo out there just cutting. Cutting, 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 cutting. And then 8 o'clock, Joseph and, and Mr. Lambert show up. Thank you, Jesus, Mr. Lambert, with that machine. Because there was no way I was getting that big old trunk off of that gate. So grateful for the people in the house and serving with their gifts. Because, man, we would not. It would, we would be driving around this morning, put it that way. If, if you've ever been over to the other campus, we have a huge main gate, and then we have a side gate. And uh, everybody would have been using the side gate. So grateful for the people that stepped up to help out there. Um, this church happens because of you guys. And I never want you to forget that. Pastor has a job because of you guys, not because of a title. A title is not enough. That's the reality in our lives. And I have this one thing. It says, no person was ever honored for what he received. Honor has always been the reward of what he gave. No person has ever honored for what he received. And honor has always been for what he gave. The reason he may have received a reward was because of what he gave. Here's one more. It is not titles that honor men, but honor that titles it is not honor it is not titles that honor men but men that honor titles the reason we have titles was because men had lived a life in such a way that we gave them that title that came first the lifestyle always comes first and then the bestowing of the honor comes after that so this morning i just put honor but this morning, I, if I had to name this sermon, it would be very simple. You better learn it now. That's what I would have named it. I'm going to read you guys some scripture. And it's going to be a lot of scripture this morning because why make it my words? Let's just make it God's and then we'll get through this thing. So. I'm going to start in verse 11, and this is not on the overheads. So don't go freaking out back there. I promise this is not there. We're going to go Revelations 5, starting in verse 11. I'll give you guys a second. My wife says I get started too fast, and then I don't give you guys. So I'm going to pray real quick, give you guys a chance to catch up. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I am grateful 
that my pastor would honor me this morning, that my pastor would trust in me this morning and allow me to communicate the gospel, the good news. But, Lord, I pray that not only do I honor him with this, but I honor you. Because, Lord, it's not just my job to honor men on this planet, but it is my job to honor you with everything I do. Let my life to be a living sacrifice. We give you all the praise this morning. We know that whatever comes out of my mouth is your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So I want you guys to think about this. Then I looked up and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. And they encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice. They were saying, worthy is the lamb who has been slain to receive power, wealth, wisdom, and strength, and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and under the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and the lamb to be praised and honored and glory and power forever and ever. <coughs> I don't want to cough right in your ear. So, so when I read that, I, I realize what even after our death, even when we make heaven, there's one word that continually comes up in that, and that's honor. We better learn it now because whether we go to heaven or hell, it looks like we're going to be honoring and praising the king anyway, so we might as well learn it right now. So I, I began to think about this, and, and even when pastor asked me to do this, I thought, man, this is really where I was trying to go. So on my last sermon, I ended it with this. How do we grow the church? Very simple. We honor. With honor, honor always begets honor. It's one thing that always happens. Honor begets honor. What does that mean? As I begin to honor and I begin to lift others and highly esteem them, what happens? God said that he's going to do that for me. And so if we want to be able to grow the church in the next generation, there's something that this next generation lacks. And that's honor. Why? Because they've been taught from my generation and your generation that honor was this. Hey, you're so awesome. And it's that cheap. As if, as if to say that honor was somehow something I could communicate. Honor will never be something that I can just relay out of my mouth. That's just lip service. Come on. The world has enough lip service. We got politicians giving us lip service. We don't need no more lip service. They want to honor their position. Why don't they just shut up and do their job? Come Pass on. some legislation, and then maybe, maybe people will begin to esteem their position again. Right? Amen. And as much as I honor my president right now, look, let's just be honest. The polls tell it all. It's hard to esteem something whenever they're not doing anything because honor in and of itself isn't a word. It's not, it's not something I communicate. It's an action. It's always an action. Love is an action. Faith is an action. If we don't put something behind it, it doesn't mean anything. It's weightless. It's pointless. I can say I honor you with my mouth and then turn around and talk all kinds of mess right behind your back. I can get on Facebook, oh, he was the best, you're the greatest, you're the... And then all of a sudden, when I get to my friends, I'm like, oh, man, I didn't mean that. I was blowing smoke, you know, blah, blah, blah. Said, Why? Because it's cheap. It doesn't mean anything. Our lifestyle has to be that of honor because then all of a sudden God looks down on that and he says, okay, now there's a place that I can inhabit. There's a place that I can be a part of because they're not just lip service, but their heart is behind what their mouth is saying. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So this morning, I just want to talk about honor. Because it's so big. I'm, I'm going to take me a drink here. <clears throat> I got to get through two of these, so we're going to go fast. All right, so honor, it, it means high respect or great esteem. But it also means to adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct. Both of those fit our king, right? Because not only do we lift him up and esteem him, but we obey him because of a set standard of rules that he gave us. 
Now, he gave us a bunch of rules in the Old Testament, but the truth is, when he came back in the New Testament, he gave us two. He said, if you can do these two, guess what? All those rules that I gave you then, they're being accomplished in these two. The greatest thing, love your neighbor as yourself, love the Lord God with all your heart, your mind, and strength. If I can do those two things, I fulfill all the law, all the prophets. Why? Because Jesus came and he did all those things. Come on, so, we, first, we have to honor God. 1 Samuel 2.30, it says, Therefore the Lord God of Israel declares, I promise that your house and the house of your father should go in and out before me forever. What does that mean? You, because y'all went to church, because y'all visited with me, I was going to honor your line. That's what he's telling David. He said, And the house of your father should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, for those whom honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me will be lightly esteemed. So now he moved from David, the lineage of the king, to everybody. And what did he say? He said, if you'll honor me, I'll honor you, a.k.a. I'm showing up, a.k.a. I'm going to be part of what you're doing, but if you don't, you're going to be lightly esteemed. What happened after David? Solomon, and then it goes down pretty quick. They lightly esteemed the king, therefore they were lightly esteemed. In our life, when we begin to honor God, it's amazing. Why? He said, because what you do in the quiet place or in the secret place, I'm going to bring out into the open. I'm going to lift you up based on what you're doing over here. But instead, we want to be those that are, okay, look at me, flashy flash, Facebook, all these other things. I'm doing great. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And he said, hey, that's your reward. But he said, if you just shut up and do what you're doing and not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing, watch what I can do for you. When it's not about, look at me, I'm trying to position myself. And instead, I'm saying, look at me, you position me. You put me in the place that you called me to. When it's not my doing and my jockeying and my positioning and saying, okay, Lord, but it said when it becomes me just saying to you, me just saying to others, I don't even care if anybody finds out. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, okay, God's going, whoop, whoop. Well, what was that? What was it? There's somebody out there that I can lift up because why? Because he says, when you'll humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, then in due time, I'll exalt you. But instead, we want to get on Facebook and be like, I'm going to exalt myself. <laughs> oh, hey, would you mind going on Facebook and giving me some likes? Why? Because we're trying to get that affirmation that was intended for us to get from God, but it's so much cheaper and easier to get it from our peers. It's so much cheaper and easier for me to get it from the people around me. And if we're not careful, we'll settle for that as if it was the real thing. And God said, you were never meant to have that right there. But instead, I want to position you, but instead you're over there trying to position yourself. How much better can he do it? What much? He's the master puzzle maker. In the course of history, listen, he can take every puzzle piece and put it in the exact right place. Instead, what happens is we go around and we're like, oh, I'm going to fit myself right in here. And we struggle and struggle and struggle. And the truth is God's saying, bro, you were never meant to occupy that right there. But instead, you're struggling because you want to because the world says somehow that if I get A, B, C, that I'm a success. And God said, if you want to be successful, simply get into the right place that I put you. And now all of a sudden, you're not struggling, you're striving. Now, that's what I want. I don't want to struggle. I want to strive in the position that God has placed me. But if I'm not careful, I'll honor myself and not honor the king first. So we must honor the Lord. He always rewards honor with honor. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Giving thanks to God the Father through him in Colossians 3.17. We honor him with more than our mouth. Our life has to back it up. 
if you say you honor God and I look at your Facebook post or if I look at your life and it's not backing up what's coming out of your mouth, guess what? It's going to be cheap. A lot of folks are going to go, eh, eh, maybe not. Maybe not. Second, we honor our pastor. Now, this is a big one for me because I love our pastor. Y'all love our pastor. Our pastor is a very well-loved guy. That's why he's in Alaska right now. It's just to, it's just to be honest because we love pastor. When it talked about Moses, it said that the anointing was pushed over his head and ran down his beard and it ran down the rest of the body. That's an example. Why did they show that? It was literally the overflow of glory of heaven being transferred to a man that was going to trickle down into the body. It's a good representation of what a pastor is in the house of God. So we need to honor our pastor. And how do we do that? Well, we honor our pastor with our gifts, with our talents. And when I say our pastor, I'm not talking about the man or the mandate, because it's not just enough just to be, oh, pastor, you're the best, you're the best, I give to you, I give to you. No, 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 we give to the house and the overflow, right? So, but I will say this, there's plenty of scripture, and I'm going to walk through some of them. We honor our pastor because we understand the mandate on his life that is to guide this house into its next one of the problems I have when I hear people that want to leave a church or leave a job or leave a whatever, they always say, oh, man, yeah, I'm going to a better. Here's the problem with better. Better makes one inferior. When the truth is, whenever I leave a place, it wasn't less better than the new one. It was the one I needed in that season to prepare me for the next. But in, in our life, if we're not careful. We'll say, oh, man, I'm going to go get me a better job. Well, the truth is you couldn't get this quote-unquote better job if you didn't learn the skill sets you learned from that job. So how can you say the next one's better whenever you wouldn't even been in that place if it weren't for this one? So if you say, I'm leaving one to go to a better, I, I challenge that thought because the truth is you would never make it to your next without the one you're in right now. And so I'm grateful for my right now because it is always preparing me for my next. It's not a better, it's just for what I need in my life at this time. Whether that's money, whether that's inherit, wh whatever. It's whatever is most necessary for my growth as a human and a believer in Christ is this season. So it's not better, it's just next. We've got to remember that. So we honor our pastor. The elders who perform their leadership duties will are to uh, their okay i can't read this morning the elders who perform their leadership duties well are to be considered worthy of double honor this one literally out of the amplified says financial support help them out especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching listen you won't see too many that work as hard as our pastor in preaching and teaching the word of God concerning eternal salvation through Christ Jesus. That's all he preaches. Pastor's always preaching eternal salvation through Christ Jesus. The blood plus nothing. You're going to hear that almost every sermon. Why? Because he so believes that it's the blood plus nothing. It is the salvation of Christ Jesus. That's what he's going to preach. He's do double honor. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonition and admonish you to, and to esteem them very highly. First Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13. We don't just honor the man. We don't just honor pastor, but we honor his vision. Why are you guys here today? Because you don't just honor pastor, the title. You honor pastor, the man. And you honor pastor the vision because whatever he has vision for the house that we must fulfill that vision for the house. If not, then what happens if I have a vision and pastor has a vision? What does that create? Die vision more than one vision. Listen, if you don't have the same vision as our pastor. 
<laughs> you better start looking elsewhere. Because if you're not in alignment with the vision of the house, if you can't come because he's gone, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have the same vision as our pastor. For you guys to show up today lets us all know that you have the same vision for the house, that this thing's going to keep going. If something tragic were to happen to pastor today, this, the vision of the house must go on. Doesn't matter the man that comes up behind him. What matters is, is the vision being fulfilled that was deemed over this place in its inception? If we can't do that, then we have die vision. We have a different understanding and a different way of doing things. Then we need to find a new place to do those. We must not only honor our pastor with money and all those things. Trust me, pastor, appreciate. We got October coming up. It's Pastor Appreciation Month. We want to appreciate our pastor. Let him know that we're grateful for the fact that he does slave over this thing. That at times, that this thing, if we're not careful, we can make this thing feel like a chain. And when I mean this thing, this pulpit, because if he has to be up here in order for you guys to be okay, that's not good for him or for you. One, we need to be disciples and learn ones, learning what it is that God wants for us, not just listening to a man. And two, if we make him feel like he can't leave, then we've done him an injustice. We're not helping him. He is married to the church. He's not bound to it. There's a difference. When me and my wife got married to each other, we didn't become bound to one another. We became in covenant with one another. There's a huge difference. It's not the old ball and chain that we see so many times and people just talk about. I don't got a ball and chain. I got a helpmate. I got somebody that's going to come. We are to be the same way for pastor. We're to be a helpmate for him that whenever he has a vision, we could be like Aaron and her, lift up his hands and say, let's win the battle. No matter what it takes today, we're going to make this thing happen. If that's finances, if that's me showing up, if that's me bringing a tractor to help cut up trees, I'm there. Because we have to be better than just saying, oh, yeah, I honor pastor. Here's my tithe. That, that, that's for you. That ain't for him anyway. Good luck. Three, and I'm going to move quick today because... My boys ain't going to be able to take it too much longer. Three, we have to honor other believers. Here's the tough one. Now, it, it, this is tough in church. One is because is humans are involved in church. Thank you, Jesus. We're all here. We all love one another. Kumbaya. Not a reality. Just not a reality. I wish you were that way. In a perfect world, this is what it would be. Pre the fall, this is what it would be. I'm out cutting trees the other day. I, I get to the back of one of the trees and I see it. There it is. Big old nasty poison ivy. I'm like, no. Oh, I see you. Got my sleeves rolled up. I'm like, got them tucked in the gloves. I'm like, brr. Sure enough, man, I get home that day. Oh, I see it. I'm like, Mike, I literally look at it and this is, this is the moment I said it. I said, God, I was out there doing your work. <laughs> Why did you let this happen? And I promise you in that very second, he said, to fall a man. It had nothing to do with me. It had everything to do with those that came before you and their decisions that caused this to happen. I didn't do it. Y'all did. <laughs> Dang, come on, man. And so I looked at it. I'm like, God, no, Lord, I didn't need that too. So but I will say, I woke up this morning and thank God uh, some of that which I thought was going to be more poison ivy had gone away. So perhaps the Lord had a little sympathy on me. Thank you, Jesus. But what happens is if we're not careful, we won't honor our loved ones, our brothers, our sisters. Why? Because of the gift that God gave them to do the work of the ministry. If we're not careful, then we'll keep those around us simply because I have an ought with them or because I have a disturbance with them or because I don't like the way they do things. Then all of a sudden, what is going to happen? I'm not going to honor the gift that God gave them. Listen to me. Imagine a world where we just said, ah, nope, God, you're not good enough. I don't care. 
I don't like that dude because, you know what, he did this, 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 this. Now, any gift that that dude could have bring into your life, it's gone. There is zero chance you receive from that. Zero. And that may have been the very thing keeping you from your next. That may have been the very thing keeping you from your next level. Simply because I couldn't let blank go. Oh, but he did this. Oh, but she said this. And now anything I could have ever received from that person immediately, I just quenched it. The Holy Spirit said, all right. All right. What does the Bible say? Honor all people. Huge to remember. This doesn't say all believers. It says all people. When you're at Walmart, all people. I can't tell you, me and my wife go to Walmart way too much. I can tell you that. We're always at Walmart. So this is why I talk about Walmart a lot, because I got lots of stories from Walmart. I promise you, I don't know what it is, the worst drivers in the world go to Walmart. Because I don't know what it is about that dang parking lot. Somebody needs to get some cameras out there or something, because not only can they not put up a shopping cart, for gosh sakes, it's like four things over just put it up so people can get the parking spot so now you got to park 45 lanes down because they can't take up the first three uh, anyway jesus forgive me for my walmart people <laughs> but it's the reality you go to walmart the one i'm like walmart i know you got more than one little dude over there in the corner picking up shopping carts five thousand in the parking lot i'm like somebody pick these things up but if you would just pick up your own, maybe they wouldn't have to hire somebody to do it. Just saying. But so you go to Walmart, there's crazy drivers, there's crazy people. You never know what you're going to see in the Walmart. Like, it, it's amazing. I was in there one night and there was an old man in a pink shirt and no pants on. And I'm like, I don't even know how you got through the door. But I was, I was so confused. I'm just going. I'm just praying my kids don't see the weird old man with no pants on because <laughs> Lord knows the Walmart people. I guess that's why there's like a whole YouTube channel for it, right? <laughs> we have to honor all people, guys. We have to honor all people. No matter, and this is the hard part, even when they're being crazy and when you don't see the giftings that God has put in them. That's why we don't just honor the gift, we honor the man. Because if we're not careful, we honor the gift and we forget about the man. And this, again, this goes back to our pastor. We don't just honor the gift of the man. Because outside of that, what if that gift goes away? What if he loses his voice? What if, what if, what if? Now all of a sudden we're going to leave that guy high and dry? That's why we honor the man. If we're not careful, we can honor the gift without honoring the man. And we lose the man. So don't just honor the gift. It says. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Who's that? That's the people in the church. That's our brotherhood. We're right here. Fear God. Honor the king. Straight from 1 Peter. Peter has straight up writings. That's why I like Peter. He's just going to tell you straight. He's not going to put like all these cute little words. Paul was a really masterful writer. He had all these really nice words to say. Peter was like, hey, this is how you do it. Just do this. Like simple. Like quit doing the dumb stuff. Start doing the good stuff. That's Peter. That's why I like Peter. He's like me. And we urge you, brethren, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. Be patient with them all, even the Walmart people. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seeks to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Giving thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for your life. This is the will of God. It's so easy to get annoyed with people, to get frustrated with people, to not have understanding from where they're coming from because you're not like them. Your culture is different. You're blah, blah, blah. Instead, God says, I called you to love that person. I called you to honor that person. 
That doesn't mean to validate that person, but it does mean to honor that person because of what God did for him. Because the same thing that he did for him, he did for you. And if there's no other reason to honor the people around us, it's for the simple fact that we honor them because of what God was willing to give up for him, for her, because he was willing to give up the same thing for you. Four, real simple. You live honorably. You. So we went from God, pastor, others, you. You live honorably. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. We look at the world today, why are they so loud? You want to know why? We ain't been doing good. Simple. I hate that verse simply because what that means is I haven't done a good enough job. That the world, my brothers and sisters in Christ, haven't done a good enough job to be able to put to silence the foolish men and women. Instead, of we're letting green hairs tell us about how the world's ending. And we're letting all these other crazies tell us, the LGBTQs and all these other people that are getting loud with all their foolishness. It says, for this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. By doing good. How, as a church, do we put to silence all the nonsense we see on the news? Simply by doing good. Simply by honoring other people in such a way, by living a life in such a way that they can't even, their ignorance becomes even ignorance to them. That's what it's saying. That you live a life so good that their ignorance becomes ignorance to them. That's what we got to do, guys. One more, and I'll close. He will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. We can seek all those things. The Bible even says it. Seek honor. Seek glory. Seek these things. But in well-doing and in patience, that endurance word, that hoopamoni that pastor talks about, we will endure eternal life. I don't want to just have honor and glory on the earth. I want when my father looks at me, to be able to say, you did it. Not only you did it, but you're doing it. It's an everyday occurrence that this thing doesn't just have to be at the end of my life. I said it last week. I don't want my life to be that which at the end of my life, my father in heaven goes, well done, my good and faithful servant. I pray that today he's looking down on this planet and he's going just like Jesus Whenever he got baptized, he comes out. He said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my son in whom I pray that God's being able to say that about me right now. That I don't have to wait till I get to heaven for God to say, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I pray that I teach my daughter that this isn't just about a one time thing, that this is an everyday occurrence so that we can put to silence the foolishness that the world is trying its best to bombard us with and trying to tell us this is normal and trying to tell us this is the way it's going to be. No, it does not have to be that way. It can change when we decide to look at the man in the mirror and say, you know what, I want to live my life in such an honorable way that I don't just honor my God and I don't just honor my pastor and I don't just honor people around me, but I live in such a way that every single person I come into contact with says, you know what, that dude is different. There was something so different about that guy that it made me see the nonsense in my own life. Because what happens is they begin to learn what true conviction is as opposed to condemnation. The world knows how to preach condemnation from every corner. 
the Me Too movements and all these crazy movements that it wants to do. And instead, they'll finally understand what the Holy Spirit conviction is. They'll fall to their knees, begin to repent. And what did God say? I'll repair their land. This land is not past repairing. I don't care what any preacher says. This land is not past repairing. It starts with me and you. It starts with us. If we're not good enough, then he'll move on to the next, I promise. We'll go to the next so that he can move on to the next. It's what had to happen in the land whenever the Israelites were going. Generations had to die off so that he could get his true understanding to the next generation that would be willing to stand up and say, yes, there's always a remnant. There's always people that believe. No matter if you feel like you're Elijah in the pit and you're going, I don't, I'm the last one. He's going, bro, I got tons of them stacked away. You just can't see them. The problem is in America, all we see is nonsense. And the truth is in the Middle East and in China, there's an underground church that's growing by thousands and thousands a day. And instead, we need people coming into America to evangelize us. Come on. So this morning, I just want to leave you with this honor. Learn to do it now. Because whether you go to heaven or hell, the Bible already declares that we're going to be giving honor to whom honor is due. And that is the king. He deserves it all. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. And so we just say thank you to him this morning. Lord, I love you. I thank you. I just pray that this word penetrates our hearts. That we would look in the proverbial mirror and we would say, Lord, if this applies to my life, let me to live such an honorable life that the people around me would be forever changed. That my life would be literally laden with the goodness of God to the point that other people would see the Holy Spirit in me and cause them to turn from their foolish, wicked ways and return back to which they were called to in the first place, that they were created for in the first place, that they were redeemed by in the first place. And that is you, O oh Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus, that you would step down, become the first perfect person on the planet to become a perfect sacrifice so that we all could come into the fullness of the glory. We can't fit no more God in this place. He's as big as he can be right now. Are we aware? Are we aware? Lord, let our eyes to be open like Paul. Lord, let the lenses come out. Let the scales fall off of both our eyes and our hearts. Let the callous hearts become made new and fleshy again so that we would live honorable lives, lives that were meant for you, lives that were not only meant for you, but, Lord, the ones that would honor you. We're grateful for what you're doing in America. I never want to forget, Lord, that even though we may not see it on the surface all the time, that which what is done in secret is being brought out into the open. And so, Lord, I just pray for open heavens because of the way things are being done in secret. Awaken us to the purposes of God so that we might fulfill them. Let us to honor our pastor. Let us to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Love you guys. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you. I, my, my voice. I got one more in me. I got one more in me. And I'll let Joseph come up and do these, but uh, you know, be, be a cheerful giver. That's what it says on top of this. It says this every week. Be a cheerful giver. We can give begrudgingly if we're not careful. We can give out of necessity or we can give out of obligation. But the truth is, God said, if you're a cheerful giver, man, I'm going to open up the heavens towards your life. I don't know about you. I need a little hope in heavens. I need a little hope in heaven. So as you give today, we're believing God for jobs and better jobs. More money, better dollars. Sales and commissions, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. 
Joseph. Thank you, sir. Y'all give it up for David. Come on. Good work. Great work.